Well, Frank, our search for this year's Kentucky Derby winner has now taken us from Florida, where we saw Fly So Free establish himself as the favorite for the great race, to California. Whoever wins today's Santa Anita Derby here automatically becomes the West Coast challenger for Kentucky. Now, the favorites are two geldings, Dinar and Best Pal. It's worth noting, I think, that no gelding has won the Santa Anita Derby in 51 years since the year before Pearl Harbor, and no gelding has won the Kentucky Derby since the year of the great stock market crash, 1929. However, Dinar and Best Pal both have impressive credentials, and the fact that they've been physically altered has affected them, well, only in a positive way in their careers so far. But they'll be challenged today by Sea Cadet, a horse without a tail but with a lot of speed, and Scan, handled by Scotty Schulhofer, who, of course, seems to be the trainer of destiny this spring since he also trains Fly So Free. But now to the conditions for today's race. This, of course, is the Santa Anita Derby, brought to you by your John Deere Lawn Care dealers. Half a million dollars in the pot, a mile and an eighth, that's one furlong shorter than the Kentucky Derby. The track is fast today, but not all that fast so far. The wind is not a factor. Let's take a look at the odds in this nine-horse field. A wide look at uh, Santa Anita, the mountains invisible today. The smog is obscuring them. But a good crowd is here, somewhere approaching 50,000. The track is happy about that. Here is Maine Minister at 25 to 1. Not a bad bet. Compelling sound, Charlie Whittingham sorts at 10 to 1. Conveyor at 99 to 1 or more. The board only goes to 99. Same for Bounding Back, who is a maiden. He's never won a race. Best Pal at 3 to 2. Dinar at 2 to 1. So Best Pal, somewhat surprisingly, is the favorite. Scan at 8 to 1. Sea Cadet at 7 to 2. And Media Plan at 39 to 1. And that also could be a bit of an overlay. So those are the odds at this moment as we come to you live from Santa Anita. Now here is Charles E. Candy. Charles E., this West Coast situation is very fluid and very interesting. Why don't you fill us in on it? Well, Jim, last year, Best Pal absolutely dominated the two-year-olds out here. But over the winter, there was a number of very impressive maiden winners with derby aspirations. But of this group, only Dinar remains. But there are some others who've been around a while, and they're steadily getting better. Sea Cadet is at the top of his game. Scan is fit and sharp for a top race. Media Plan has Wayne Lucas and Blinkers. Compelling sound could be anything from Charlie Whittingham. And they all have to sort it out this afternoon, and this could be why California has had such an impact on the Derby picture in the last five years. Back east, the three-year-olds can avoid each other right up until Derby Day, whereas out here, they have to face each other in one acid test. And whoever runs big today truly deserves strong support in Louisville, Jim. No question about that. You know, the great sports writer, the late Red Smith, said that there are more good stories in horse racing than any other sport, and I tend to agree. As evidence, consider this story. It's a long way from a depression farm in Iowa to Golden Eagle Farm, a long way from the hard-working farm horses of the 30s to Best Pal, winner already of a million dollars. It's a long way from the Iowa high school where Betty and John maybe sat next to each other because both of their last names began with the letter M a long way to their great breeding farm of today. They started with a Ma and Pa grocery store that grew into a great chain of California supermarkets. They're grateful to California. California is a very good place to, to raise a horse, in my opinion. We uh, are somewhat uh, light years behind Kentucky and maybe even Florida at the moment, but uh, I think we're on the right track, and I think in the next uh, five to ten years, you will see major improvement in the in the California breeding operation. I love the races, and there's nothing like that feeling to have your own horse that you bred come across that finish line in front. Well, they bred Best Pal at their farm, and he surprised them as a two-year-old when he won the Del Mar Futurity last August. Then, after failing in the Breeders' Cup, he pleased them again by winning the million-dollar Hollywood Futurity. He was rested after that until a month ago when he was a close third to Dinar in the San Rafael. His daddy, Hapatoni, won the Santa Anita Derby and stands right here in California. Best pal is homebred all the way and makes the babies proud. He's a very pleasant surprise, and uh, I, I couldn't have come at a, at a better time. It's the 50th year of our uh, the babies' marriage, and... And it's just uh, good to have a little bit of fringe benefit in that 50th year. Racing has been a, a great thing to share. The breeding program has been a great thing to share. We both enjoy it. And I think we both get a great deal of satisfaction out of trying to breed a better horse. I have uh, 
just one lifetime goal, and that is to be number one breeder in the United States just for one year. That would make me very, very happy. Well, there they are in their box today. Will Betty and John maybe receive that great golden anniversary present, victory today and in Kentucky? Well, maybe. Or will Alan Paulson, and there he is, another Iowa farm boy, grown into great wealth as the head of Gulfstream Jets, will he realize the dream with a horse named Dinar? Actually, there's a story behind every one of the horses in this race, and for more on that, here's Dave Johnson. The term breeding shed somehow doesn't fit this palatial stallion barn at Brookside Farm in Kentucky. And the owner, Alan Paulson, one of the major players in the sport, is having a ball campaigning his homebred Dinar. Impressive, tough. Watch the kick and courage of Dinar on the outside as he outgames Apollo and Best Pal. His rider, Chris McCarran, finds himself in his usual spring dilemma. Which horse to ride to the Triple Crown? He had a handful of choices. I've been fortunate enough to ride some good colts this winter, and uh, having to choose between Sea Cadet and Denard, I had to make that decision based on my gut feeling, basically on what Denard has accomplished thus far. I think he's done the most this winter, and I think he's shown that he's the best colt on the West Coast, and, and that's basically why I chose to ride him. And here's one he didn't pick, Sea Cadet. It must have been difficult to reject a colt who carried him to such an easy romp three weeks ago over scan and compelling sound. So Eddie Delahousse, who picks up the mount, could be the beneficiary. Runner-up scan might be coming back to his promising two-year-old form, and Scotty Schulhofer is the trainer of Envy this spring. But Charlie Whittingham is here, always a threat, and he has compelling sound. Personally, Dinar looks like the logical winner, but main minister who drew the rail is a horse with value who could win it all. But Scan is my first choice. I think he's sitting on a win. Charles C. Jim, who do you like? Well, I seldom disagree with Dave Johnson, but I think I like Best Pal. He's more experienced. He's won a million bucks already, and I think he's ready. After all these years, you and I are finally going to agree on one. We agree. <laughs> it's a close fit, but I think a horse that's won two grade one stakes has to get the nod in a really tight race. Best Pal. Best Pal. Okay, well, we're going to find that in a couple of minutes when we return. 54th running of the Santa Anita Derby, main minister at 25 to 1, compelling sound at 10 to 1, conveyor 99 to 1 or better, the same for bounding back. Best Pal at 8 to 5 now, a very slight favorite over Dinar at 2 to 1, scan 7 to 1, 7 to 2 on C Cadet, media plan you see, and now to Dave Johnson. Interesting that Wayne Lucas and uh, Charlie Whittingham made major equipment changes in this race. Compelling sound and media plan. Both wear blinkers and they're off. And the main minister on the inside to the front. Best pal from between horses charging up. Sea Cadet on the outside. Dinar right there and media plan in the middle of the racetrack. Now past the stands for the first time. Main minister at the rail battles with Sea Cadet on the outside. Those two heads apart. Bounding back just behind the leaders in third. Best pal in tight quarters fourth. Media plan on the outside is fifth. Dinar is sixth at this point. Scan between horses seventh. Compelling sound shuffled back on the inside. And the trailer is conveyor. The pace is realistic as they move on to the back stretch. And main minister leads at three parts of a length. And on the outside, see cadet challenges. Those two now heads apart. A gap of two lengths. And on the outside, it's media plan. The Roan in third by a head. But now bounding back the long shot into the third spot. Media plan on the outside is fourth. Then best pal is fifth. Dinar sixth. Followed by scan. Then compelling sound and conveyor at the back of the pack. About 15 lengths off the lead. The half in 46 and 2. It doesn't look like a track record or a stakes record today. Going to the far turn. Now C. Cadet on the outside takes command by a head. Main Minister battles back along the inside. Media plan is right there as his best pal who's three wide and joining the leaders. Dinar behind a wall of horses. Fifth at this point looking for some racing room. A quarter of a mile to go. Best pal on the far, far outside. C. Cadet between horses. Main Minister hanging tight with the rail. Three of them across the track and here comes Dinar on the far outside. Charging up on the outside. Sea Cadet drops back. Now a two-horse race for the wire. Dinar on the outside with Chris McGarren. Up to take the man and win the Santa Anita Derby by half a length. Best pal second by two. Then Sea Cadet followed by Main Minister. Those four only about four lengths off at the wire in the final time. One minute and 48 seconds, which ties the 10th fastest. So how about that? 
it was Dinar who stopped the early leaders, and Chris McCarron wide at the head of the stretch, breaks his jinky. He was 0 for 11 coming into the Santa Anita Derby and is the unofficial winner with Dinar. Jim, Charlesy? Well, well, well. There we have the West Coast challenger for the Kentucky Derby. His name is Dinar. He's named after an aviation checkpoint in France, a place that owner Alan Fulton is particularly fond of. What do you think? He's only run five times. He's been beaten once by only a nose. He was a little bit reserved in the wagering because there had been some speculation that maybe he wasn't himself physically because he didn't work for 18 days following his victory in the Rafa San Rafael. But obviously, those fears can be put to waste. This is a game stretch run in Colt, and the horse who finishes second with him, too, both of them certainly are on their way to Louisville. He beat uh, Best Pal just about the way he did in the San Rafael. Uh, uh, but there was, they were equal weights this time. Both yep. carried 122. Okay, uh, let's have another look at the stretch run now, Dave. Well, Best Pal looked like he had the jump on uh, Dinar. And as you see there, Best Pal is three out from the rail. C Cadet, who had been up close early, and the white cap is uh, at this point dropping back. And in the red and blue cap on the extreme outside, Chris McCarron with strong left-handed urging gets uh, Dinar in gear, and he duplicates his 91 form. He just keeps running those bullets, Jim. Dinar on the outside, passing Best Pal in the final 16th of a mile to unofficially take the Santa Anita Derby. This was quite a performance. Well, you know, Dave, we had a microphone on owner Alan Paulson as they were coming down the stretch. Maybe we can have a look at that right now. Alan Paulson at age 69. Yes. Go, 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 Baby. He's made billions of dollars of jets and he sold them all over the world and he's flown them all over the world. But the Iowa farm boy came out just then cheering his horse to victory in the Santa Anita Derby. That was the first Santa Anita Derby victory, by the way, for Chris McCarron, the jockey. Quite remarkably, he was 0 for 11 in the Santa Anita Derby. Just about the only big race in this country, I guess, that he hadn't won. Well, he's won it now at age 34, uh, Hall of Fame jockey. Chris McCarron, born and raised in New England, but he's been out here for a long time now. There was a great deal of discussion this week as to whether Chris McCarron would stay on uh, 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 the, winner, the winner here, Dinard, right. or stay with Sea Cadet. Obviously, he made the right choice. Yes, he did. A very good family. His, his brother Greg rides in Maryland. I remember that Dinar is by Strawberry Road, who Paulson stands at his farm, and he's bred to go all day. The mile and a quarter of the Kentucky Derby will be no problem. Results, remember, are still unofficial. We'll be back for the official result and the prices. Once again, Dinar has won the Santa Anita Derby unofficially. We're back again, and the result is official. Dinar, the winner, paying 640, 340, and 260. Best Pal, 320, and 240, and Sea Cadet, 280, the exacta. That's the bet where you, you must pick the horses in the order, first and second, $40. The trifecta for first three, $46.60. I'm standing here now with Ian Jory, the successful trainer of Dinar. Beautiful, I'm sorry, of the, the almost successful trainer of Best Pal. Ian, uh, your horse ran a good race. It looked a little bit like the San Rafael. He did, yeah. He, he, I, I was very pleased with him. Uh, I think he got beat by a better horse. He might still be a little short, but he still got beat. I had an excuse last time, I don't this time. Still going to go to Kentucky? Uh, that's up to Mr. Maybe. I'd, I'd, I'd like to give it a bash, but um, that's his decision. So you think the horse can go on? And yes, I do. Be ready for Yes, it. I do. I think so, but that's, that's, that's his decision. Okay. Well, well done. Thanks, and, and we'll see you down the line. He and Jory, the trainer, a uh, best pal who couldn't quite do it today. Here is Chris McCarron. At age 34, you finally 36, 36. did 36 now? I was yeah. trying to give you a break. I just had a birthday last week. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've finally taken the monkey off your back on this one. Yeah, this is a race I've wanted to win for a long time, and uh, I had the right horse this year, that's for sure. Want to take another look at it? I'd love to, yeah. He had a Should bad trip going to the first turn. Uh, I, I had uh, a good deal, of trouble, good deal of difficulty getting him back off these horses. Well, this is the turn for home, but he's full of run right here. I lost a little ground the, the last 5 16 of a mile, but... He was running. I didn't want to drop him back in there and slow his momentum down. Any. He's a fighter, Jim. He's a he's a good colt. We're saying it looks a little bit like the San Rafael all over. 
Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he didn't get to best pal until very late, but it, it, at the wire, he was there in time. Looked so, like he had plenty left, too. He was going away at the end and uh, galloped out strong, and uh, he's improved considerably every start, and uh, he doesn't have to improve much more than this to be the best. Okay, congratulations, Chris. Thank you. Here's an Iowa farm boy who's very happy right now, Alan Paulson, the owner. Congratulations. I suppose you want to breed the strawberry now. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. And he's a fabulous and, uh, horse, isn't he? Yes. So. We had you. Uh, here's your reaction. Take take a look right now. Oh. Uh, they were coming down the stretch. You might be a little surprised. There you go. Go, go, go. Go, go, yeah. go, go, go. Go, go, go. I got him in. Did you see that? <laughs> right on. So it's on to Kentucky, huh? Oh, yes. And I'm sure he'd be one of the top favorites here, not the favorite. Okay, it's well. Great race. He's a great horse. And isn't it a great satisfaction when you bred right. him, when he's a homebred? That's right. Do you know today's his birthday? Yes. Yeah. April 6th, and he was number six in the post, so he got a sort of a good uh, omen, I guess. So. Absolutely. He's three years old today, as most of you know. All horses officially have their birthday on January 1st, but he was actually born on this day. That's right. So oh. uh, in our Strawberry Road, he's uh, turning out to be quite a sire. We got another horse called Fauda that I think is as good as Denard, and she'll be out here running. She's done real well in her first two races. And, uh, good. So Does Denard get his own Gulfstream jet to go back in uh, back in? Right. <laughs> so it's nice to have a horse win that you own the sire, you own the mare, and you bred him. So it's a real sure. thrill. The best thrill I think I've ever had. Enjoy every minute of it until you get to Kentucky, then maybe again. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Okay, let's take one more look at the stretch run here, and there it is. And there you see him. He uh, makes his big move there on the up. They're on the outside. We're in Shadowroll, and he's coming running late. Best Pal looks like a winner here. He may have been one race away, as Ian Jory was saying, from being at his absolute best. He's been away three months. But here comes Dinar on the outside. He's as game as they come, and he's only been beaten one nose in his life. And there he was, winning the Santa Anita Derby. One week from today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll be at Keeneland in Kentucky, and we will see again Fly So Free, who's still the favorite for the Kentucky Derby.